بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد The 22nd juz or para of the Quran basically continues on with Surah Al-Ahzab and it begins by mentioning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's relationship with his wives and also commanding them the believing women and the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with certain uh, with certain things that are specific to them such as staying in their homes and not exposing themselves like the women used to expose their bodies in the days of Jahiliya. So basically there is the command here to dress in your hijab and to dress modestly and not to expose your beauty. And we notice here that this is all uh, tied in with uh, not obeying or falling into the traps of the munafiqun because the munafiqun or the hypocrites they you know wanted to expose the women the believers the believing women and they wanted that you know their modesty their modesty be exposed and we find that until this very day that the munafiqun in our ranks the hypocrites that are in our ranks this is one thing that they always target the modesty and the chastity of our uh, of our sisters our muslim sisters exposing their hijab or or trying to remove their hijab and trying to spread fahisha and indecency uh, among the muslims and that's why here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, basically reminds the believers that we don't have any choice regarding whatever Allah has decided and whatever His Messenger وسلم, has decided. The believers, they have no choice. They have absolutely no choice. Uh, after that, there are several uh, uh, descriptions or characteristics of the believing men and the believing women that are mentioned uh, in these verses. And then after that we have uh, a few rulings pertaining to divorce, pertaining to divorce that is mentioned uh, in the remaining of Surah Al-Ahzab. And then towards the end of Surah Al-Ahzab, we have uh, basically Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala uh, telling us uh, the end uh, the end that the munafiqun, the hypocrites, and the disbelievers will face. And then the very, very end of Surah Al-Ahzab uh, reminds uh, us human beings of the amana, the, the, the responsibility that we took onto our shoulders. Uh, after that, we have Surah Saba, Surah Saba, which is named after uh, the kingdom of uh, Saba, uh, whose famous uh, queen was uh, Bilqis. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically in the surah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically uh, mentions uh, several descriptions of the akhirah uh, and also uh, mentioning uh, the, the, the kuffar, how their arguments on that day will be of no use, and also how iman uh, is too late when a person dies. Uh, and then it also mentions uh, Dawood and Suleiman and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bestowed his favor upon them. Uh, and then it also mentions uh, Sabah, the, the kingdom of Sabah, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically uh, bestowed his blessings uh, upon them, gave them a lot of his blessings, but they were unthankful and so uh, they were punished. Uh, for that. Uh, after that we have uh, Surah Al-Fatir. Surah Al-Fatir uh, basically uh, mentions several of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes uh, such as his omnipotence, uh, his might, uh, his wisdom and that you know he knows everything and that he is aware of everything, he sees everything and he is free of any need and any want. And not only that, but we human beings 
are the ones who are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah, O mankind, you are the ones who are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, if you have ever been wondering, uh, you know, why does Allah want us to worship Him? Does He need our worship? No. It is because we are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are in need of His worship. As for Allah, He is free of any need of anything. Uh, the rest of the surah basically uh, refutes the mushrikun uh, and their shirk, uh, basically, um, uh, and also their denial, their denial of the akhirah. Uh, and then, um, uh, basically, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls uh, upon the mushrikun to ponder uh, upon the Day of Judgment. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, to realize that this day is a day that will be coming. Um, after that, uh, we have Surah Yasin. Surah Yasin, just the very beginning of it. Uh, that is what this juz is concluded with. And so Surah Yasin is a very, very virtuous surah. Uh, and it starts with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning the Quran and how he revealed the Quran, uh, and how uh, the, the disbelievers, uh, no matter how much you may try to convince them of the truth, uh, they will not believe. That is, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sealed their hearts and blinded their sight from seeing the truth. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, uh, the story uh, of Ashab al Qarya, uh, the people of the township, and how Allah sent messengers to them. First, He sent two messengers. Then, after they were uh, they were denied, Allah sent a third. And then, how a believer among them, uh, you know, uh, told them, told these people, uh, "What is wrong with you? Believe in these messengers. They are coming to you with the truth." And how eventually He died or was killed, and then, you know, he said, you know, uh, uh, I wish my people knew uh, what Allah has uh, granted me with and forgive me of my sins, and that is what uh, basically this Juz uh, concludes with. Uh, we will continue uh, with Surah Yasin in the next Juz. Until then, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.